pottery peeps. So today I am going to demonstrate how to make a birdhouse. Isn't this cute? I had to keep this one. So this is a closed form and this is probably about five pounds of clay. I think I'm only doing about three pounds today, but just love them. And for the little tiny ones, aren't those adorable? So these are a couple that I've kept that um, are hanging around my garden and around the studio. So let's go ahead and get you set up at the wheel and I'll show you how to do a close form. All right, so I have three pounds here. It's a B mix, cone five clay, cone five six. And we're gonna go ahead and center it. So usually when I start to center, I have my hand here and I have my palm sitting at um, six o'clock. I have my elbow into my hips, T-Rex arms, which I've said before, and this steadies the clay, okay? And then I'm gonna use this hand, this part of my hand, to pull the clay up, cone it up and cone it down, which, I just got it, <laughs> it just got away from me there. Sometimes if it gets away from you, just take your thumbnail and get that clay that's um, sandwiched on the bat off. So I just repeat this action where I'm pushing up with my left palm, or I guess not the palm, whatever this is called. So I'm pushing this direction, pushing six to 12 o'clock. And steadying with the right one. And I do tend to clean this off a lot. I don't like that when I get that clay on the bat. And then I can get my hands under more clay. It's throwing me off. There we go. That's better. And then, as you'll notice at the end, I will kind of shape this off, kind of like a beehive or a dome. And then I always um, go in with my thumbs. That's just the way I've always done it. Here's my sponge. I throw a lot with the sponge so that the clay doesn't grab at my hands. So I'm just pulling really steady out. And then I'm going to compress that middle in. So I just yanked it all out. So I'll do a couple of passes where I'll take the clay from the side and compress to the middle. This is a good time with my needle tool. It's not here. Well, this is a good time to check your bottom, and I think mine's actually too thin, so I need to find a needle tool. There's one favorite needle tool that we all like, <laughs> and so we all borrow it from each other and I figured all my tools were still here, so. All right, so I've got about a quarter of an inch there, which is good. So I'll compress that again, and get rid of my needle mark, close that back up. Then I'm going to pull the balls, I'm getting under right there. Now when I'm pulling a closed form, I want to make a straight up and down cylinder. Actually, I want, I want to leave a lot more clay here, so you'll see me come up and compress that with my finger. That's just an action that I've learned to do over the years. Just like a whole one action, pull up a wall and compress the, compress the rim at the same time. 
So when doing a close form, think of you're climbing a mountain. You're trying to get that clay up to the peak of the mountain. So that's kind of how I'm throwing this, is I want this clay to come up and I'm pushing more with my right hand, steadying with my left. When I come up here, I can hit that with my finger to keep that rim straight. I always tend to get the water out of the middle each time. And since this is gonna be a close form, I will collar this in each time. If you have more clay at the top, it's easier, um, if you keep your walls fairly thick here, it's easier to, whoops, okay, that's gotta go. <laughs> I have this rule about hair. <laughs> so, I didn't, we will just take a wooden tool and put my hair up. It's cold here today, so I kept my hair down while I was working and forgot that it was down before I got on the wheel. Yes, do not. If you have long hair, keep it up when you're on the wheel. It can be really dangerous. So. So I've thinned my walls out here. Still leaving, leaving some clay there up here at the top. I'm gonna do one more pass because I know I've got some clay that I can steal down here. And I'm kind of forming an onion. Or a clove of garlic. Okay, so right now I want to make sure I have all the water out of the inside. I'm going to go ahead and add a foot by just coming in with my metal rib, getting under there. And coming into the middle here and kind of just pressing it in a little bit. And then I'll smooth that off with my sponge. Just finishes off because this will not be trimmed. Okay. I'm going to wet the outside and I'm going to come in full hands. And I actually have my wheel going pretty fast. So I'm just going to encourage this to come in. Now it will thicken up my wall. So I'll have to do a couple of pulls in between, otherwise it's gonna to get too heavy on here on the top. Plus I can use that clay. I'm not too worried about the shape because once this is a closed form, I will capture that air. I basically have a balloon and I can push against the air and create my shape. So I just steadily just keep steady pressure on the outside. Doing another pull because my walls got too thick. And then I will close this off. And there you go, it's closed up. Okay, so now I need to, I don't pinch this clay off, um, mainly because I have plants for it. It will be part of the hanging, um, the loop that will hang. So now I'm gonna come in here with my metal rib and I'm gonna shape what I want. And I can push against the air and shape this into the shape I want. Closed forms are really fun. It allows you to do a whole bunch of other things. Salt and pepper shakers, salt pigs, um, um, little trinket dishes. You can actually cut the lid. So now it's just a matter of, I want to make sure that for the birdhouse that I have a flat enough, oh, this looks like an acorn. Oof, maybe I should do an acorn or an apple. <laughs> I 
but I do want to have somewhat of a good space right here in the middle to put the hole for the birdhouse. I don't like the idea of an acorn. I don't know. We'll see. These all evolve on their own. Hey! So that is pretty much it. Except for... A lot of times I let this dipping up a little bit before I do this, but... I will pull this, and this is end it, This will end up being my hanger. It does look like an apple. So I'll just really gently pull this up, and I kind of push it to the side, and then. I will re I'll touch this up as it dries, but at least I've got the loop there, okay? Sometimes and sometimes I will actually pull a handle and add. Like if I end up doing that, I'll end up pulling. So you saw how I did that. So when it works, <laughs> it works like that. But if you keep playing with it, then you might lose it like I just did. So I will show you when this dries out how to um, add clay to make a bigger hoop, bigger hook, loop, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so that's basically it. All right. So we'll let this dry out and then we will um, make a birdhouse out of it. All right, so <clears throat> the one that I threw isn't setting up. It's really cold here today, and I had lowered the heat because it was 80 degrees a couple of days ago, and now we're snowing and raining and doing all that fun stuff. So I have in-floor heating in the studio, and I had lowered the heat, so it's kind of cold in here today. And so things aren't drying out. So I'm going to go ahead and work on the one that I threw yesterday, which is on the soft. I mean, I can move it. Um, and it's pretty soft actually right here. So I'll need to be a little careful. This isn't drying out either. <laughs> um, some of the things that I use are fondant molds. And you can find these everywhere. Um, Joann's, um, craft stores, uh, online, uh, Amazon. I just collected a bunch of them from all over the place. So um, I can't really tell you exactly where I got one thing or another. I also use a lot of these fondant cutters for making flowers. Uh, this is how I did, actually it's, I have one for the butterfly too, and this is how I did the flowers on this one. So those are some helpful places. Anything that you can do with um, to make a cake, you can actually use with clay. So this one, um, I'm not really liking the top. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it off and I'm going to go ahead and pull a new top. So I'm just going to dip it in my water and pull it until I like it. And I just keep moving the clay. I'll dip it back in the water as soon as I, my hands start grabbing on it. And I just kind of squeeze it. There's a lot of videos out there on how to pull a handle. And I'm looking to get the bottom fairly thin because I want to be able to do like a fun little curly cue or something. So that'll work. And then I kind of just gauge where to cut it off at. And then I'll score this guy. Score this guy. This is, I could add slip, but this clay is about the same, actually. So then I'm going to just attach this onto the top and smooth it in. I want it to look like it was one piece. 
That's why a lot of times, if I'm careful, I can use the extra clay when I close the form to do this. But sometimes if I'm making a bigger hook, I can't get it long enough. So, so just make sure I got a really good connection here. Got my water too far away, I think. And if I have to, I'll even pull it a little bit here. And I don't really like this side. I like the other side, but I don't really like this side. And you have to, you can't just do a hook here, you know, like right at the top, because then it's gonna hang crooked. So you need to actually push this guy over. and then make your hook. So I'm gonna flatten this guy out just a little bit and then I'm gonna bring it up. Hope I'm still in there. Actually, I need to wipe my hands off. Where's my towel? All right, I'm gonna grab my towel. My hands get a little too sticky. It gets a little bit too much. So what I'm gonna do, I want to curl this in. So I'm going to just encourage it to wiggle and then I'm going to curl it around. And then I'm going to bring it and make my hook. So technically I wouldn't have to necessarily score all of this, but I'm going to go ahead. This is our main connection. This is what's going to hang it up. So. But with it being this wet, a lot of times I don't bother with this and it's fine. But we'll go ahead and, and then I will give myself a look at it from both sides. Make sure I like the way that is and then I will smooth it out. Sometimes I'll let it dry a little bit before I smooth it out. And I don't like this little hump here. Your, the ferrule of your paintbrush is actually a really good tool. And the reason why it's doing this is because I've got air trapped in here and it's actually started to shrink. I did put um, a hole in it while it was dry, but when I smoothed it, I actually covered up the hole. But the next thing I'm gonna do is actually add that hole back. I'm gonna cut the hole. So one thing I like to do too is I like to give a little, I like these to look very organic, very much like they were nature made. So I'm just gonna make a little, out of a little piece of clay, just a little, little curl here and I'm gonna set it in here. Just to give it a little bit more decoration. Then I'll score that on. And then just... I actually might have to come back to this. This is actually a little bit wetter than I like to... I like them to be somewhat leather hard so that I can push against them. And I'm having trouble with that right now little too wet. So I might have to go in give this a little bit more time to stiffen up on me. We'll see. So basically smooth any joints, any rough edges. Isn't it cute? Okay. So I probably want my hole to be here. Let's see if I can actually put a hole in. So this is just, I have a set of cookie cutters that I got off of Amazon. And so I will just figure out where I want my hole. If it's more leather hard, then I'll go ahead and just punch it with the cookie cutter, but it 
since it's not, I'm just going to go ahead and cut it. Yeah, this is a lot softer and I usually like to work. Okay, of course you want to round this all off and make it super, super smooth. Don't want little birdies getting poked by anything sharp. I um, fully expect these to be functional. I want birds to move into them. <laughs> I have to get rid of my cats though, or put them somewhere there. Well, my cats pretty much get anywhere, don't they? Okay, so I've got my hole in there. Um, you know what? I'm going to switch. I'm going to turn you off and switch you into a, a, another place so you can see better. There, I think that's. I think that's better. You can see kind of what I'm doing. All right, so my next. Thing is for I need to make something for the little little bird to stand on, you know. So I'm gonna roll out a coil. So just. Let's try that. Now, one thing I do like to do, I like them to look very organic. So, I've rolled out this coil, and then I've kind of twisted it. And now it's up to if you want to make it look like a vine, if you want to make it look like a branch. Um, with this one, I made it look like a branch by putting lines in it from my scoring tool. But, oh, what the heck, we'll do a branch. So basically I'm just, just taking my scoring tool and making a whole bunch of lines in it. I'm actually gonna take them all the way down to here too, because I'm gonna cut this in half and show you what I'm gonna do. And I'm just haphazardly putting them on here because after I get them on, I'm going to twist it. And once you twist it, magic happens. So I'm going to take this guy and split it in half. And by splitting it in half, I'm going to make it, I want it to be gnarled. So basically I've split it in half and I'm going to just kind of squeeze it and make it look gnarly. It's already too long, I can tell. But I need to have some support for this. So this is definitely something, I mean, each one of these ends up being of your own making because it what you do determines the size of your thing determines what you end up doing. Okay, so basically I'm going to do something like that, but for this size, I think it's a little too long. So we're going to shorten our little thing. And I actually have a, a fun little stamp for this guy. Here we go. So if you, and then, so then it looks more like, you know, more like a piece of wood, like a log. So then, now I just need to score and put this guy on. Actually, I think I want to use this. Add your slip. And then push this guy on. And I have added support underneath until it dries. This, of course, is going to be really... You can also just go ahead and put a hole there and um, 
put in a dowel when it's done. But for now, I'm just going to add a little bit support for that. I'm going to clean up my slip. And now it's just a matter of decorating it however you want to with flowers and um, so forth and leaves. Um, you know what? I, I have used a lot of um, Michael Hartbridge his leaves. I use a lot of those. I like that one. I have a lot of his leaves and um, I use them to decorate. So basically I want to add um, an awning, I guess, if you would. And then just press the leaf into the clay. And then I tear the clay off and what it does is it gives me a thin edge. Makes it look more realistic. And if you follow him on Facebook, he has a couple of videos on um, YouTube under Michael Harbridge. His website is Learn Fired Arts, but I love these leaves. I use them a lot. So once I've got that, then I'll just peel it off. And I've got this beautiful leaf. Then I'm going to take the leaf and I'm going to curve it into the shape I want. And just like that, I have an awning for my little birdhouse. So I'm just going to put that on. So this is, I mean, you could just decorate it like this. You can sell them cheaper if you decorated it with just the, the leaf and without putting more flowers on it and going overboard like I tend to do. <laughs> you could do them a lot faster if you did it this way. And they're super cute. You don't have to over decorate them. I mean, it's basically, I mean, when you get working on a piece, it's um, up to you how far you take that piece. But if you're sewing pottery, is definitely something that you need to consider how much time and how much you can sell it for. All right. So I'm going to just wipe out any of the slip that's still there and any of my scoring lines. So that's super cute. But I want some flowers. And actually, one of my favorite flowers is this big, huge mum. I love this mum. Because I can put a mum on here and make a statement. <laughs> so I think we're going to give this guy a mum. Now, a lot of times, I will hit this mold with cooking spray. But I've been using this mold. Cooking spray or... Um, Cornstarch. I prefer the cooking spray to these with these molds, but um, I've been using this mold and it hasn't been sticking. So basically, until it starts sticking, I don't use the cooking spray. I'll come in here with my metal rib and I'll take off the edges. I want to roll it in to get a good impression with that flower, and then I'll take off the excess with the metal rib. And I just took off some petals. So I'll push some clay back in. Sometimes if you just take your finger around the edge, it's okay if the middle of the flower has got more clay in it. I'm all right with that. But if the petals have less clay, then they look more realistic. Okay, so I've taken my finger all the way around, pulled that clay back to the middle, 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to score it while it's in here. Then I'm going to score where I'm going to put it. This is still really wet up here. And then I will curl it out of the mold. And I've got a really pretty mum. And then add some slip. My slip is actually really thick. And sometimes when it's really thick, I will go ahead and score through it again. I'm going to add just a little bit of water to what I just did because my slip is so thick. And then with something this large, I want to start in the middle, walk it out to the edges. And the key to this, uh, making these, is to layer them. To me, they just look so much better if they're layered. And then I'm gonna push that in against it. All right. So I like things in threes. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and add another little flower here. So I'll probably do three flowers, maybe a butterfly, or maybe two flowers and a butterfly to this one. Did the same thing, just pulled it and then just push it out. Got a little extra clay, just pinch off. We'll score that. I actually have someone who saw this little one that I did and really liked it. So I'm kind of, I mean, no two things are going to be the same. But I'm patterning this bigger one off of this little one. So, and then there was one other flower, this one, but I don't like this flower and this flower split on me. So I think I'm going to take one of these flowers. So I'm just going to roll out some clay. And I tend to keep these ones fairly thick. So with this type of flour, you actually cut it first. And then you, actually this one I better get with corn, with some cooking spray because it has stuck on me before. So I will actually just squirt it and smooth it in there. So then I'm gonna set that little piece of clay on the mold and then push it in here, a little sandwich. And then I end up with this really pretty flower actually. So I think I'm, except for that flower doesn't quite, it doesn't actually meet the style. So let's go to a different flower. Let's, it's kind of a tropical flower. So let's go with this one. And I haven't used these to hit that with some cooking spray too. And I'll put this little guy in here. Press him out. Well, I don't like that either. <laughs> Sometimes when you're doing this, um, I need some more clay. It just doesn't work out with what you're doing. So, I am gonna go 
I think reason why is because I've got asters and mums or um, dahlias and they're just a, a busier flower than these others. So I think I'll do another little aster in this one. Right now it looks like two eyes. Actually, there we go. All right. Score right here. And you know what? I think I need a third one. This one's going to need more flowers, but then it's a bigger birdhouse than that other one I made. So you can see how you can get super carried away on these guys. And the bigger the birdhouse, the more there is to decorate. <laughs> but just remember, the more there is to glaze too. Because <laughs> that's where the real work comes in in my book is when you have to glaze these guys. All right. That's super cute. Okay. Let's um, add a butterfly. I have another one of these with the butterfly that I like to use. I have a whole bunch of different butterfly molds, but this one I just my go-to I just keep going back to it so and it works the same way I haven't used it in a while I hit it with some little spray Actually, we'll put the little butterfly in the mold push the design in peel them off and then I tend to just bend them like that and then I have to decide oh well I guess I just did didn't I actually let's see here there's so many places I could put this do I want it there yep it'll balance out because I've got the bigger flower so I'm going to set it here on the little asters. Now when you're putting a butterfly on, I need to water down my slip. It's getting too, too thick. So when I put a butterfly on, I will take either a needle tool or something like this and push it down in the middle, okay? And then I will just flare out its little wings. All right, so we got one done. <laughs> so I've got a few others to do. And when it has set up, I will put holes in the bottom. So I have put little holes in all the bottoms so that if a little birdie makes a nest, um, it has a way to drain out and um, so that it's completely functional. So now I'm just gonna let it sit up, quit messing with it, <laughs> and um, get going on the others as soon as they dry out some more. Man, crazy weather we're having. Anyway, I hope that um, gets you a, a jump start on how to make these adorable little close form well i guess this one's, this one's not little but um these little birdhouses um here's one of the butterflies that i've painted and i use these leaves just like i showed you here i actually put more leaves on the top making this look like a vine so they're just limited to your imagination and how much work you want to put into them <laughs> so very very fun
fun project though. Um, I do enjoy making them. I absolutely love clay when it's in this state. Um, don't enjoy glazing them quite so much, but um, anyway, so I hope this is helpful. Like, subscribe, um, show up for the next video next Saturday, and uh, see what we're making in the studio. All right, have a good one.